Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. Who are the pagans worried about? Who do they see as a threat? Ivory towers and seminaries with professors writing dissertations on the theoretical this and that of, you know, transubstantiation or the hypostatic union or, but no, they don't care. Nancy Pelosi, her response to that is, that's cute. You can do that. And, and, and you can have a 501c3 too. Who's, who's in trouble right now? Christian nationalist. Those MAGA Christian Republicans. Right? It's the Christians who have the audacity to believe that, that the Bible actually applies to this life. And that it's not just a private Christian faith that we hold on to until we get to heaven. People who hate God are fine with that kind of Christian religion. They're fine with you having your private little faith with your cute little family so long as it doesn't affect anything in the real world. They care about the real world. And part of the reason why the state has not felt threatened by Christians for decades in our nation is because the state wants the world. They don't want heaven. They don't even believe it exists. So they want what they can see. They want the world. And the reason why Christians haven't posed a threat is because Christians have forsaken the world. The secular state wants the world and Christians don't because they've been convinced that Jesus doesn't want the world. That Jesus doesn't hate the world necessarily, but he's entirely indifferent to the world. Christian faith is a theoretical, ethereal, spiritual faith with a spiritual promise and a spiritual ambition. But anybody who starts to take Christianity seriously and says, no, Christ is king of kings, that that means that, that Caesar is not God. Romans 13 says that Caesar is a servant of God. He is God's servant, meaning Caesar is appointed by God and he works for God. Separation of church and state as two separate sovereign spheres, sure. But separation of Christ and state, no. There is a difference between a separation of church and state. I don't want an ecclesiocracy, a church-run state. And I sure as heck don't want a state-run church. And if you wonder what that looks like, it's the last two and a half years. Caesar says, close your doors. Pastors say, how long? Caesar says, get a shot. And beta pastors say, how many? Caesar says, wear a mask. And Timothy Keller says, could I wear three? That's a state-run church. If you wonder what an ecclesiocracy is, a church-run state, Look back about 500 years at Roman Catholicism. That didn't go well either. We're not talking about an ecclesiocracy, church-run state, and we're certainly not talking about statism, which is a state-run church, which is what we've had, where the state is God. It is the final arbiter, the final authority. The state is ultimately trusted and esteemed and praised as though it were God himself. We don't want either of those options. We want a separation of church and state, but what we reject entirely is a separation of Christ and state. Christ is king over kings. Christ is over me and Connor as elders of this church. We are not the final authority. In Christ's church, Christ is head of the church. But Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 through 22 says this, that God has made him, that is Christ, head of all things. Notice this, the Bible says that Christ is head of the church, but Christ is not exclusively head of the church, meaning that's the only institution that he is over. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible says that Christ is head over all things, and all of his enemies, not someday, but even now, progressively, one by one, are being made a footstool for his feet. That means that anything that is good and true and beautiful, Christ is head of. 
not just the church, and anything that is in opposition, enmity towards Christ, one by one, is being made to bow and become a footstool for Christ's feet. Christ is head of the church. We could say this biblically. Christ is uniquely head of the church. The church is the only institution, the only people for which Christ died. So Ephesians chapter 5, where it says, husband, the husband is the head of the wife, and the wife should submit to her husband in everything as the church submits to Christ. And likewise, a husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church. Christ, who is head of the church, loved the church and died for the church. He gave himself up unto death for her. Christ is head of the church in a unique way, but he is head of all things. Christ doesn't die for the civil state, and he also doesn't die, and hear me on this, he doesn't die for families. There are three primary spheres instituted divinely by God that the scripture speaks of, the home, the church, and the state. Christ only died for one of them, but he is head of all three. Christ did not die for the home. Christ died for the church. Now the beauty is that the church, as it is made up of men and women who are faithful in their homes, we will have Christian households. We will have Christian families. But Christ didn't die for the sphere or the institution of the family. He died for the church, but he is head of the home. So that the husband is the head of the wife and the head of the children, but he has a head over him who is Christ. And in the church, we have elders and we have deacons. We have the congregation and the priesthood of all believers. But above it all, the head is Christ. And so too, the scripture would affirm that even in the civil realm, you have governors and mayors and councils and presidents. But above it all, you have Christ. And what we have in our nation right now is not the absence of Christ as king of kings, but we simply have rebellious kings that are not submitting to Christ. And one of the reasons why is because the church has refused to tell them to do so. The church has abdicated its role and responsibility. One of the church's responsibilities is to stay in its lane, but part of its lane requires loving the church, feeding the church, feeding the sheep, but also in a prophetic sense crying out to the state and saying, it is not lawful for you to kill a million babies each year. It is not lawful for you to confuse and indoctrinate children about gender. It is not lawful for you to break apart families and tell children that they have rights where their parents cannot speak into it. It is not lawful for you to run public schools in this fashion. It is not lawful for you to rig elections. It is not lawful for you to be in rebellion to Christ. You are not king in the ultimate sense, Caesar. You have a king above you. Romans 13 says that you are a servant of God to do his bidding, not yours. Jesus said, when questioned about taxes, he responded by saying, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but render unto God what is God's. There's so many simple questions that if we just asked, if we just ask as Christians, it would change your worldview. Think about this. Jesus says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. The question that that begs is this, and who gets to decide what is Caesar's? Render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Render unto God what belongs to God. Now with those two parties, Caesar and God, which one gets to decide what is God's and what is Caesar's? God. See, we read that and we say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jesus said, pay taxes. Yeah, but Jesus didn't say that Caesar gets to decide the taxes. And biblically speaking, any tax that rivals what God commands, which is a tithe of 10%, is tyranny. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Thanks for sticking around. I've got an important announcement to make. That's the Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference 2023. May 5th, 6th, and 7th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Theonomy 
and post-millennialism. We've got the speakers that we've already had lined up. That's Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Dr. Gary DeMar, non-doctor Pastor Joel Webin. But we also have a bonus speaker, and that is Dale Partridge from Real Christianity. Perhaps you've heard of him. If not, you should start listening to his podcast. It's fantastic. Dale Partridge is going to be joining our team. We're going to have live panels on Friday night and Saturday night where you'll be able to write in questions and get them answered. We're also going to have a catered barbecue Texas style barbecue meal on Friday that's a part of your registration for fee. All that is covered. So you need to get that. This is how you do it. Go and register right now at rightresponseconference.com. Again, that's rightresponseconference.com. God bless.